You're a prominent Democrat, kind of a little bit of a different flavor of Democrats, but something that I found interesting you've said is that you will never speak to President Obama again. I think that that's interesting. I'd love for you to share with us a little bit more about why. Well, I knew Obama as a student. I knew him as Barry, um, and he used to hang out with my closest friend on the faculty, Charles Ogletree, and uh, he used to hang out in front of the office, and we shared an, an office area. So I got to talk to Barry numerous times, and I really liked him. He always came to the office wearing a leather jacket with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth and um, and alternating between talking Harvard style and talking uh, black style. Uh, and it would depend who he was talking to. So I, I always wondered about his authenticity, but I supported him uh, when he ran the first time. And I was having some doubts about the second time. And he called me and I was in Israel. And he asked me what people in Israel were talking about. And I said, Iran, et cetera. And he said, well, come to the Oval Office when you come back to the United States. And so I did. And we had a considerably long time conversation. Obviously, he was asking for me to endorse him um, for the second term. And uh, he wanted to assure me that he had Israel's back. And he kept saying over and over again, you know me, I'm a man of my word. I will never abandon Israel. Um, I will never accept an Iran deal that doesn't guarantee that they will never get nuclear weapons. And so I foolishly endorsed him. I wish I hadn't. If I had it to take over again, I would vote for Mitt Romney, who would have been a better president and was a great governor, I thought, of, um, of Massachusetts. But uh, And then when at the last week of his term, last couple of weeks of his term, he did not veto over the objection of his own UN representative and other people in the State Department, he allowed a resolution to be passed for the Security Council that said that the Western Wall, the holiest place of Judaism, equivalent to the Vatican and Catholicism or, or Salt Lake City to Mormonism, that the Western Wall is illegally occupied territory. He allowed the United States to vote for that and that the access roads to Hebrew University and the Hadassah Hospital are all illegally occupied territory. And that, for me... Uh, show mm -hmm. that he was either he was lying to me or he had changed his mind because he was really out to get Netanyahu. Uh, this was his last month in office and he was going to get revenge. This was not in the interest of the United States. It was not American policy. It was just Barack Obama being nasty and, and hurting uh, Israel and hurting American interests in the Middle East. And I thought it was such a, uh, uh, a show of uh, a personal peak that it terminated my relationship with him. I had a very good relationship with him. I was invited to the White House repeatedly during his eight years. Uh, I was one of the only people outside of government invited to see him give the award uh, Medal of Honor to um, Shimon Perez. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, he wrote me a beautiful note on my 75th birthday. But once this happened, you know, I pick my friends carefully, and so uh, I, I am uh, I am not a friend of Barack Obama, and I hope his wife, um, uh, Michelle, who I remember also as a student, I hope she does not run for president. I really appreciate you sharing that. That's great insight. That leads us, I think, naturally into a discussion about this latest book that you've written, The War Against the Jews. I want to jump into that. Israel left the Gaza Strip in 2005. It's offered to give land of its own to Palestine many times in order to end the conflict, but every time it has Palestine and the Palestinian leaders have rejected that compromise deal. They don't want a two-state solution, it seems. So what's your take on how to end this conflict and stop Hamas barbarism as you've proposed? Well, there's a story in today's um, um, media in Israel, but not in the United States, that Sinwa, the head of the uh, Hamas, has said he doesn't want a ceasefire. He does not want a ceasefire. He wants to escalate. He wants to see more Palestinian civilians in Gaza killed. He thinks that will be good for Hamas's cause. And he thinks that if we don't have a ceasefire uh, during Ramadan, that will increase uh, the violence and increase the death rate. And Hamas benefits every time a civilian is killed. If they kill an Israeli civilian, they benefit. If Israel kills by accident, because they don't try to do it, a Palestinian civilian, Hamas benefits. And everybody should read this article. I posted it online uh, in, in my uh, uh, Twitter account. The article is amazing because it, it really quotes Sinwa, the head of Hamas, 
saying he's now changed his mind. He doesn't want to cease fire. So all these useful idiots who are protesting, yesterday they protested um, in California um, at the at the election results uh, when with Adam Schiff, they were screaming, cease fire, cease fire. Well, scream that to Hamas. Israel has offered a, a ceasefire. Uh, and Hamas says no, because Sinwa and Hamas want dead Palestinians, preferably babies. The more dead babies that they can show on television, the stronger their cause. This is so cynical. And CNN plays into it. MSNBC plays into it. The New York Times plays into it. But the American public is too smart for that. And they understand the cynicism of Hamas, that Hamas's goal is dead babies in order to put the onus on Israel. There's nothing more cynical than that. I asked the head of the palace, one of the heads of the Palestinian group, when I debated him uh, uh, recently um, uh, on uh, 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 a television show, I said, will you stand up to Hamas and say, do not use human shields. This is on Pierce mm -hmm. Morgan. And this leading Palestinian said, Hamas does not use human shields. Well, I have a videotape of one of the leaders of Hamas bragging about how we use our children and our women as human shields. They are martyrs. We're proud of them. They're human shields, human shields. This is not my term. This is Hamas's term. And yet the leaders of the Palestinian Authority think they could pull the wool over the eyes of decent Americans by saying Hamas doesn't use human shields. They're also now saying, many feminists are now saying, well, Hamas didn't rape anybody. If anybody was raped, it was probably the Israeli Defense Forces who, who raped them. This kind of rape denial is kind of rich, small Holocaust denial. You know, extremists say, oh, the Holocaust didn't occur. But now you get these people, there are tapes, there are recordings, there are testimonies, there are photographs of women raped, being raped, and, and you see the results. And me too, me too, except if you're a Jew. And so I am no longer like a supporter of the Me Too movement. I am not a supporter of gays for Palestine. If you want to be a gay for Palestine, buy a one-way ticket to Gaza. Go to Gaza. And you'll never get out. You'll be killed. You'll be thrown off a roof if you're a gay for Gaza. But they're so hate the hatred of Israel and Jews is so deep that they're willing to subordinate their own cause of gay rights to the anti-Israel attitudes that they have. Is there any hope for stopping it? Is there any solution? Yeah, the same solution that won us the Second World War. Total, unequivocal victory and surrender. Hamas has to be destroyed. You know, the Secretary of Defense made the classic mistake. He said, oh, if you attack Gaza, you'll just create more and more terrorists. No. What happened after the Second World War? We demolished Germany. We killed so many Germans. We demolished Japan. We dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. What happened? Germany and Japan became our strongest allies. They understood mm -hmm. we were strong. And their leaders had produced disaster. And I think if Israel totally destroys Hamas, the people of Gaza will be thankful and say, mm -hmm. thank you, Israel, for taking these tyrants away from us and bringing us a prospect, possibly, of a democracy.